Welcome back uh, to this course on instability and patterning. Uh, we, we were discussing, we just started in the previous class discussion on soft lithography and next couple of lectures at least we will continue discussing the same. But before that I would like to sort of formally make an announcement for the course that uh, we are almost approaching the halfway stage. And every day at the beginning of the class I slow, show a slide which contains my uh, mail ID. So, I would like to sort of repeat uh, which I have said in the very first lecture itself that if you have any feedback, comments or question, feel free to send me an email at my mail ID uh, which is also I typically give uh, on the first slide uh, uh, of every class. So, feel absolutely free to sort of send any of your suggestion or any question, comments you have. I will try to sort of get back to you as fast as possible and try to help you resolve uh, any doubts you have. The reason uh, why I say this because uh, I, I must be honest that for a chemical engineering, uh, for a student uh, doing undergraduation in chemical engineering, uh, this is a pretty new area. Of course, I do not regard that the concepts are very, very tough or I mean some basic understanding of uh, 12 standard science is probably all you need to follow this course which is not heavy on mathematics or anything like that. But if you still have any doubt, feel absolutely free to get back to me at my designated email ID. So now coming back to the subject, we started discussing about soft lithography and uh, in the finishing hours we talked about uh, the or introduced you to the concept of a material, uh, material called Silgard or a cross-linked polydimethyl siloxane. We just talked about how this Silgard is more of a brand name, it is a, it's a product, it is a internationally famous product. Everyone who is even doing some bit of work on soft lithography or microfluidics pretty routinely uses this and this is a product from very, very well renowned product uh, from Dow Corning USA. There are other companies who sort of make uh, other elastomeric products. So, please do not feel that Silgard is sort of the only material or I am in no way through this course certifying this to be the best material. But it, it is, if you, if you look at uh, soft lithography literature or papers published in the area of microfluidics, you will find extensive use of this particular material. Now, uh, so one of the things is uh, uh, what we talked in soft lithography is that uh, it uses a flexible stamp uh, for uh, patterning. So, this is equivalent to the mask in photolithography. and uh, the mold in nano imprint lithography. So, I would regard that a soft lithography stamp is nearly identical to that of an NIL mold, both uh, having a relief structure One of the key differences being this is in a soft elastomeric material in contrast this is rigid. So, this uh, is the rigidity of an NIL mold is necessary because of the way the technique is implemented because you will be sort of pressing it hard with the application of an external uh, pressure or uh, on a on the film. So, so that your stamp or your mold can withstand that external pressure and, and can replicate the patterns on the film surface or, or can cause the viscoplastic deformation which you want on your film surface to result, you need the structural rigidity of the stamp or of the mold, I am sorry. Uh, and that is why NIL typically relies on a 
uh, rigid uh, mold. In contrast, in soft lithography, you typically do not apply an external pressure. We will see today what are the mechanisms or how exactly the pattern replication mechanism differs uh, from that in nano imprint lithography. And uh, you rely uh, on stuff like uh, capillary driven flow. Uh, primarily, I would say you would rely on capillary driven flow for pattern replication. There are various different forms in which it can be implemented. We will talk about some of them in contrast to a viscoplastic deformation. Uh, due to an applied external pressure. Now, saying that, uh, of course, uh, the, I, we will discuss in details uh, about the pattern replication mechanism, but uh, what I can also tell you at this point of time the use of a flexible stamp in contrast to, to a rigid mold as it is used in, in case of nano imprint lithography has one major advantage or a couple of very significant advantages. I mean you will realize as and when we proceed in our discussion in soft lithography, but at this point of time maybe it, it would not be a bad idea to highlight some of those advantages. The first advantage is that if you remember in one of the slides of nano imprint lithography. Uh, wh while we were talking nano imprint lithography, we did mention that maintaining a a parallel configuration between mold and film was extremely important. Because if you do not maintain a parallel configuration, what is going to happen is that this is your stamp, this is perfectly parallel let us say. In contrast, if you have a arrangement like this, you can pretty well imagine here you would be sort of uh, getting pretty decent pattern replication spanning over large areas, but here what you will get, you will get the pattern getting transferred only over a limited area number one and secondly there will be a variation in the pattern morphology along the film surface because uh, of its non-parallel configuration. Okay, so this we understand is very, very important in nano imprint lithography, but if you also philosophically look, I mean the reason why the research paradigm gradually shifted to soft lithography and imprint based techniques rather than uh, remaining stuck uh, with photolithography is to explore areas in bulk nanotechnology where you essentially need the structured or the topographically patterned surfaces for also uh, for a non microelectronic application and various low cost applications. So, one of the uh, selling points of, of this imprinting as well as the soft lithography techniques has been that you can implement them at the lab scale at any lab scale maybe at a high school laborat laboratory scale without elaborate infrastructural arrangement like uh, what you need in photolithography. Uh, like you do not have you may not have a clean room or you may not have a you do not need a yellow room for example, but you may not also have a clean room where you are sort of uh, um, uh, proceeding with your soft lithography experiment. So, in that case uh, if you think from a practical standpoint there is every possibility that your sample or the film surface or the film you want to pattern might have some dust particles here and there. So, what will that mean that you have the film, you have coated the film and uh, in one of the previous lectures I remember that we mentioned that uh, a typical dimension of a dust particle can be 
few tens of microns. For example, human hair depends on the texture varies from person to person is roughly 50 to 100 microns. So, a typical dust particle will be anywhere between 20 microns to let us say 100 microns. Now, you are talking by way of uh, patterning dimensions at dimensions which are literally let us say uh, a few hundred nanometer down to let us say 10 nanometer. That is what we said and we talked that since uh, pattern replication in uh, neither nano imprint lithography or soft lithography is diffraction limited and therefore, you can go down to as low as 10 nanometer. So, feature height also can be let us say uh, something like a uh, few hundred nanometer. So, now you can imagine that in case you have a film and you have a dust particle which has a height of even if it is few micron. What that means? It means when you want to bring your stamp into contact uh, or your mold into contact, this particle will act as a spacer. Okay. So, in case you have a rigid stamp, it is definitely, so you, you now let us say I redraw the thing. So, you have a film, you have a dust particle over here and you have a rigid stamp. So, this particle might lead to several things. Firstly, it will not allow the full stamp, it will prevent the complete uh, the stamp to come in into conformal contact with the film. Second thing is you are sort of approaching this stamp towards the film and then what you would be doing, you would be applying the external pressure. So, the moment you apply the external pressure, this uh, because the stamp is uh, or the mold is not uniformly touching with the film. So, what can be a likely configuration. A likely configuration can be like over some areas uh, the stamp comes in contact. So, essentially this replicates a configuration like this, it is a non parallel configuration. The other thing is now if you uh, look from the standpoint of the implementation of the nano imprint lithography you might be applying high pressure, high uniform pressure. So, that uniform pressure will try to bring the stamp again in conformal contact with the film surface. So, the pressure applies all over the uh, stamp surface and that sort of tries to force the stamp or, or the mold to come in contact with the film. And this particle might get deformed partially, but what might also happen? that this might in the worst case lead to a stamp breakage from here. So, that is disastrous. So, not only you get a bad pattern replication, but you might also eventually land up with a with a um, uh, stamp damage. So, there can be if uh, you have some particles or dust on film surface that would imply that uh, prevents conformal contact non uniformity in pattern replication as well as in the worst case, not a very common scenario, but there can be limited chance I would say of stamp damage. Okay. So, therefore, though we proclaim that uh, imprinting group of techniques are rather simple to execute and probably they do not extensively require uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, instrument support. Reality is that if you are really serious about implementing your nano imprint lithography group of methods uh, carefully, 
you would like to ensure that your film surface is at least dust free. And in order to ensure that, how can you ensure? I mean, all you are doing is that you can use a syringe filter or something like that to ensure that during the coating, the spin coating process, uh, no dust goes in or no contamination goes into the film surface from the solution. Or in other words, I mean, if you look at the practical setting again, uh, if you are looking at a film, this film has been created, let us say, by spin coating. This is a very normal procedure and I remember that while talking about uh, photolithography, we have discussed about spin coating in greater detail. So, the question is that what are the likely settings or likely causes to bring in something like a particle sitting on the film surface. So, one of the possible thing is you must think practically what from where this particle can come. So, you can have a dirty surrounding or your lab environment is not that clean. So, there are a lot of dust particles which are uh, roaming around uh, within the dust, a lot, lot of particles which are in the dust, I mean in, in the air, in the surrounding air if it is not a clean room. So, one possibility is that you take the substrate for coating. So, from the air, from air some particle can come and sit on the substrate itself before the film is coated. So, if you now try to, so essentially what might happen that you are coating the film on a dirty surface. So, what is dirty here? It contains some dust particles and I think we talked in terms of uh, uh, while we were discussing uh, spin coating, the importance of cleaning the substrate. So, this is one of the key things. So, if you now try to coat the film on, on such a surf surface by spin coating itself, you are going to get enormous thickness variation around the uh, particles. Okay. And then again, uh, think of that we told that this is a few micron uh, in size or in diameter and then by spin coating you are probably looking at creating a film which is like uh, a few hundred nanometer at best, maybe you are looking at a film which is 40 or 50 or 20 nanometers. So, compared to the film thickness, this particle, so this is your film thickness you are aiming and the reality is this particle is like Mount Everest sitting on the surface. So, no way uh, it sort of, uh, so this is the an exaggerated view of the particle and this is the film thickness you desire. So, this actually acts as a defect on the substrate itself and hinders formation of a continuous film. Okay. So, this you might, might, must understand. So, one of the possible ways of uh, where the dust or possible means from where or possible uh, mm, uh, defect, uh, I mean possible reason for having dust on the film surface is that the dust might have been present on the substrate uh, even before the film was coated. The same thing even if you sort of uh, take good care of cleaning your substrate and then coat your film by, by let us say spin coating. So, the substrate you sort of ensured was uh, dust free, you now have coated and while you are trying to waiting to do the experiments or while you are processing the film for subsequent uh, downstream processing that is embossing or imprinting or whatever, some dust particles from a dirty environment can come and now settle down again on the surface of the film. Okay. So, that is precisely the scenario we talked over here. So, some dust particles sort of gather from the surface of uh, uh, from somewhere, maybe from air and settle on the surface of the film. The, so, here there is a slightly different, slight difference between the previous case. If you have the dust uh, present on the substrate before the film is coated, then what you will uh, eventually result uh, is that you will have a film which contains defect. But this is a scenario which is slightly different. You might have a 
nice continuous integrated film or nice continuous film and on which so the, the, the dust particles can come and settle. So, while the film is good here, but the consequences during the imprinting will be pretty disastrous uh, in this case also. So, that is not at all desirable. But the third possibility also remains. So, in these two cases, both the cases we sort of assume or we sort of feel that the dust particle which was present floating in air comes and settles either on the substrate or on the uh, on the coated film but there can be a third possibility that uh, you bring in some contaminants or particles along with the solution you are dispensing so here it is you let's say you take a clean so i would regard that this is the second likely setting this is the first likely setting of incorporating a defect this is the second setting but you can think of a third setting also this is again from a I am giving you or telling you in a fashion which is very, very practical. You really, if you are interested in implementing any of these lithography techniques or want to work in thin film, polymer thin film experiments, you sort of have to be very careful about that. That can be that when you are dispensing the solution, you might along with the dispense solution or dispense drop, some dust might come in. Okay. So, you have to be careful about this also this aspect also. So, typically two experimental protocols are, are followed uh, in order to prevent this occurrence. One of them is before coating, one generally centrifuges you all know what is a centrifuge I guess, centrifuge is the solution. So, if you sort of centrifuge the basic idea is that as compared to the polymer solution the dust particles which might be heavier would sort of uh, settle towards the bottom of the of the centrifuge tube so even if you have some particles it will sort of uh, settle at the bottom of the centrifuge tube so naturally what you would be like interested to do is to take the solution from the upper part of the centrifuge tube for coating so solution from upper part is used and this is very common I mean lot of people who do coating with thin films even in, in, in the industrially in photolithography wherever you do spin coating this is a practice that is generally followed. And how do you take out this solution you typically would use some sort of a syringe and a needle uh, a typically a syringe and so the second precaution typically you would take so if this is your syringe from which you would it can be a micro syringe or whatever from which you would like to. So, here first you suck out the solution from this uh, upper part of the centrifuge tube and once you are happy or once you have have adequate amount of solution for dispensing, then before uh, instead of dispensing directly on the on the so what you will be doing you will be bringing the syringe maybe with automatic uh, if you have an automatic attachment. Many spin coaters come with an automatic dispensing mechanism, so that is also possible, but the other thing is that you can just bring it, uh, carry it uh, manually and dispense it, I mean even then uh, spin coating works. So, uh, typically a second precaution that is taken is that instead of dispensing it directly from the uh, uh, dispensing nozzle of the syringe, you would uh, put on something called a syringe filter ok. 
Okay. So, all it has, it has a sort of a cap like thing which uh, has a filter, filter paper or something attached. So, this uh, further sort of does not allow, there can be different cut off sizes. So, the final drop that uh, is getting dispensed on the substrate is uh, through this uh, syringe filter. So, even if there are some particulate imp impurities in the solution which you have taken after centrifuging, those particles, the idea is that those particle, particulate, um, pa the particulate objects are sort of trapped here at the syringe filter and you get a drop which is as clean as possible. So, a very briefly, uh, this is not exactly related to soft lithography or nano imprint lithography or photolithography specifically, but this is an important aspect and uh, uh, it is a good discussion I think we had that you need to have a very clean film, uh, particularly free from particles to sort of uh, uh, execute any of the patterning techniques you you would like to do. And uh, so, typically dust particles can sort of come in or sort of contaminate your system in three likely ways. The first possibility is that the particles stick to the substrate. The second uh, possibility is that you get a clean film, but still the particles because you are, you might be working in a dirty environment or something like that. So, the particles come and sit on the film surface and the third possibility is that the particles come along with the dispensed solution. Okay. So, uh, the third one we sort of routinely take care so that it does not uh, affect your uh, your um, uh, film quality. For but uh, I'm afraid for the first two, the only uh, possible way is that if you are if you are working in a clean room, that's probably the most desired thing, irrespective of the lithography type of lithography you are doing. But even if you are not working in a clean room, so try to work in a laboratory space which is quite clean. It's not very dirty or very dusty. So, if not a clean room, maybe a cleaner room or a cleaner portion of the lab where these type of activities sort of can be taken care of. And uh, in context of, uh, I would say it is a very practical problem, particularly if you are a non-expert in the lithography and feel that this technique is pretty simple and let us uh, do some uh, homemade uh, uh, so soft lithography or nano lithography. And I can tell you that unlike photolithography, which really requires extensive hardware and things like that, and therefore uh, it is only the dedicated groups and many of the industries which actually implement it, soft lithography and embossing and imprinting lithography, many of the research groups all over the globe who are non-experts in lithography, but want to have pattern surfaces for some, o some other application like let us say structural color or super hydrophobicity or whatever, uh, they do it. So, that way this is actually, these, these techniques are very easy to implement and they are pretty flexible. So, it is done, done pretty routinely. So, in spite of understanding all the possible problems and uh, well taking care of uh, some of them in a, in a scientific fashion, uh, for example, you can, uh, you can almost certainly prevent any dust contamination coming in with the with the dispense drop i mean that that is uh, that there is a very sort of well established protocol now that uh, the dispensed uh, the, the drop to be dispensed or the solution to be dispensed for coating typically is uh, centrifuged and then you use a syringe filter but i'm afraid the um, settling of dust on on a film surface or a substrate or on a substrate is rather difficult to control so assuming or agreeing to the fact or if you if we sort of accept the fact that you can have some random dust particles coming here and there you have we have now seen that this almost even the presence of a single dust particle sort of makes implementation of nano imprint lithography uh, perfectly almost impossible okay so this is a major problem because you are using a rigid stamp and here we just noted down or we noted down what are the likely problems because of the presence of this uh, dust particle, maybe even one single dust particle over the area in which you want to implement your pattern. In contrast, now if you are using a flexible stamp, let us say, 
flexible stamp, let us say an elastomeric stamp. Uh, of cross-link polydimethylsiloxane. So, that is flexible now. So, this is the stamp. Let us say and we had a pretty similar setting in case of nano imprint lithography. Only thing is this was a rigid mold. Here, this is a soft flexible stamp. So, can you guess what is the difference that is going to come up in these two settings? So, here the dust particle sort of uh, did not allow the stamp or a major part of the stamp to come in conformal contact. So, maybe only a small area came in contact and that too it was not a conformal contact. There is a continuous variation in the depth of the structures uh, because of the presence of maybe even a single dust particle. But look at or try to guess what happens here. Here, the stamp is flexible, so it sort of comes in conformal contact. Sorry for the drawing here, the thicknesses should not have been more with the film and the particle. So, what it means that over a significant portion of the film, in spite of it, it contains some dust particles on the surface, it is in very good conformal contact. Okay. So, now if you, if you implement one, or one of the soft lithography techniques, which we are going to discuss subsequently, you can see that though there were some dust particles, your final pattern of the film may not be, may contain some defects around the particles, around the places where you have uh, particles, but uh, there are significant zones which for many of your application can be adequate or good enough for you to use this substrate for experimentation. So, that is a that is a huge advantage. So, if you are looking at uh, looking at uh, creating a pattern substrate for carrying out some experimentation on, on let us say any of the phenomena you want to study. Let us say it can be on structural color, it can be on super hydrophobicity or it can be wetting dewetting studies. This type of an area, so let us say this is a few millimeter you get which is defect free, where there is no defect, where the pattern uh, you have created is a perfect negative replica. of the stamp pattern, well you are through. You actually have a reasonably good area in which the, in spite of the presence of the dust particles, which, which is a very, very practical problem you would be encountering or you can encounter, you can still get zones which are pretty defect free and nice. So, now compare and think of yourself about the advantage. In nano imprint lithography or classical imprinting based techniques which rely on the use of a uh, rigid stamp, even the presence of one single dust particle can sort of not only distorts your pattern, but it can eventually lead to uh, as something as catastrophic as a damage of stamp. Uh, however, in contrast to that, you see yourself now or you realize that the presence of uh, uh, the, the use of a flexible stamp makes it really sort of uh, flexible. The technique itself is now pretty user friendly. So, you might have patches uh, of areas you, and you can actually see it under the microscope that there might be one dust particle and surrounding. So, let us say this you are now seeing from the top under the microscope. So, you have a pattern surface like this 
and all of a sudden you will see that there is an area like this where there are no structures and these uh, structures have not come in because of the fact that over this area because of the uh, dust particle the stamp was uh, unable or rather did not come in conformal contact. So, that prevented, so this is sort of that area where it the stamp has not come in conformal contact. So, this can be one dust particle and I will try to show you one of uh, such images uh, in the next, uh, uh, within the next one classes or something from my own uh, research group. Uh, we have we we do get lots of these type of images where you see that one dust particle there is one area which is uh, so, so there is an area adjoining area it is a surrounding area where there are no structures or the patterns are missing but there are other parts of the sample you have huge or large areas where pretty uniform structures have formed so this is one of the very very big advantages of using a flexible stamp or uh, the concept uh, that was introduced by way of soft lithography which sort of uh, has really brought in your uh, non photolithographic uh, patterning techniques to sort of at, at a scale where it can be implemented with really bare minimum facilities and in laboratories which are not specifically designated for patterning research. So, you can be working on some other aspect, but you can still get or do it uh, uh, at your uh, with the minimal facilities you have. Uh, by your using your hands and not much instrumentation. So, in other way uh, the soft lithography techniques are quite do it yourself type. And that is really the key advantage or key reason why these techniques are extremely popular. The second, so this is one of the major advantages if I am allowed to note down. So, advantage number one in favor of uh, using a flexible stamp, I guess there is no further point for me to sort of summarize it again and again that even if you have a sample which is not free from defects, so there can be dust or there can be scratches or other contaminants on the film surface, you can still get reasonably large areas where the pattern dimensions or the laterally or physically the patterns are not at all distorted and which might sort of serve your purpose for various applications. It may not serve your purpose for microelectronics, but there are a host of applications where if you get a get a reasonably wide zone like this, it is perfectly fine. Okay. Now, apart from this one, there is another a second significant advantage and that is associated with the mold or stamp, uh, mold or stamp withdrawal. Uh, so, this mold withdrawal is essentially for NIL and uh, stamp withdrawal is for the soft lithography methods. What is that advantage? So, let us say that you somehow have a dust free environment, you have ensured you have coated nice films and on one side you are implementing NIL, on the other side you are implementing soft lithography. So, here you have a nice uh, rigid NIL mold, on this side you have a nice flexible soft lithography stamp. 
you here you imprint or emboss the film here also you do the pattern replication we are yet to sort of discuss in detail about the detail mechanism which we propose to take up shortly so things are in conformal contact in both the cases so the pattern has been transferred onto the film surface so the thermal cycling is over in nil and we will talk what needs to be done so now at this stage we are good at pattern replication is over. So, once pattern replication is over, you now understand what is the subsequent stage. The subsequent stage is in case of NIEL for example, you would be lowering the temperature. So, the thermal cycling will be over, you will be doing the cooling and once it is cooled, what you are going to do? You are going to withdraw the stamp or detach the mold, not the stamp, detach the And we had a detailed discussion, pretty detailed discussion on this topic in NIL. So, what needs to be done? The, the entire stamp, entire mold has to be sort of dislodged all at once. So, you have to grip it from the sides or something and then you have to uh, dislodge all at once. And we had discussed in detail that uh, if you uh, do not use uh, stamp uh, mold release agents, there is a significant possibility that there might be a cohesive failure uh, within the of, of the structures. So, you may not get a clean detachment of the mold. So, you might have remnant layers of polymers sticking to the mold surface leading to two stage damage. The mold becomes sort of uh, non-usable or secondary processing or cleaning has to be done of the mold and the structures uh, are non-uniform on the film surface. So, you we talked about that we need to use a mold release agent and things like that. In contrast, so the other thing is apart from using a mold release agent, of course, you need to have a gripping mechanism. So, that sort of holds the entire stamp and detaches just like that. So, depending on uh, how small it is at a lab scale, it can be a tweezer where you sort of uh, push it from one side and detach. Uh, it can be a pretty good robot arm if you are talking in terms of uh, uh, huge automatic NIL setup. But this step also becomes uh, pretty important, pretty important in the sense that you should ensure that by way of detachment, not only you use the mold release agent and things like that, you really do not do something that uh, or mechanical force you apply for the detachment should not be so high or something like that, that damages the stamp. That, that is of utmost importance because if the stamp gets damaged, then you cannot use it again. So, this is, this is a real important critical and often a tricky stage of nano imprint lithography. So, in other words that even if you have a defect free film, uh, you have a nice film, you have a nice stamp, you do everything perfectly, you do the pattern replication, you do the thermal cycling you know that the viscoplastic deformation and the force was ad adequate, the uh, uh, mold filling has, has occurred nicely, even that then there is a possibility of the stamp to uh, sort of, uh, I mean the structures as well as, this, as well as the stamp might get damaged during the detachment phase. In contrast, here same thing has happened, uh, pattern replication has taken place, but when it comes to the question of detachment, you have a huge advantage. And what is that advantage? That advantage is imparted or given to you because of the flexibility of the stamp. So, what does it mean? 
It means that unlike in a in a setting like nano imprint lithography where you were using or you had to use a rigid stamp. So, you have to de design of something like a, a holding mechanism for the whole stamp to sort of um, come up all at once. Here what you can do is you can use simply something like a tweezer to hold the stamp from one of the sides and uh, you can merely you can understand what I am going to say I am sure now. You can merely peel it off from what's one side. Because this is flexible, so this is possible. You just peel it, hold it with a tweezer. or something like that and simply peel it. You, you all understand what is peeling, removal of the, uh, uh, the, the I mean you can just uh, uh, hold it uh, and pull it out. So, what will happen is that the, the stamp can be nicely withdrawn uh, from the uh, pattern film. Exposing the patterns once it is uh, uh, fully peeled off. Other advantage is that since Silgard is a pretty low surface energy material in itself, I, I think we discussed in the previous class uh, the cross linked uh, surface energy or of approximately 20 milli joule per meter square. So, anyway this is low surface energy, so it really does not adhere uh, too well to any of the polymer or any of the, the film that you have imprinted using that. So, it, so detachment is pretty, pretty clean. So, a low surface energy essentially implies uh, that uh, it, it sort of act or performs the same, same uh, uh, functionality what a mold release agent is supposed to do in case of nano imprint lithography because a mold release agent is also nothing but a uh, layer uh, or a coating on your stamp with a low surface energy material which sort of uh, reduces the adhesion uh, between the stamp material and the film or the polymer, uh, polymer film material which you have imprinted uh, during this stage. So, that way they are comparable, I, I really will not uh, commend that uh, this is uh, this uh, surface energy or PDMS uh, or cross link PDMS is really greatly advantageous uh, from the standpoint of it it's, uh, does not attach or the interaction is different. But the real advantage lies in the fact that you, you can peel off a flexible stamp. So, peeling of a flexible stamp. This is a hugely advantageous thing and you can imagine uh, that uh, if you are performing your nano imprint lithography with a small stamp at a small area, probably you can somehow manually dislodge the stamp without sort of damaging it. But uh, if, you, if you are really key, keen on um, implementing your NIL or performing your NIL uh, over a large area, let us say a few centimeter square area, let us say over an area of 2 centimeter by 2 centimeter which will be roughly something like this. Uh, even then uh, it is difficult. In contrast, even a full 6 inch wafer scale if you have the appropriate type of stamp, uh, you can uh, sort of peel it off nicely without any possible chances of uh, pattern damage or something like that. So, uh, I would like to sort of uh, summarize quickly the discussion we had so far in, in this class and we talked about uh, the distinctions uh, in a way or sort of uh, the similarities I would say uh, of uh, uh, a mold in nano imprint lithography with a uh, stamp in soft lithography. So, a nano imprint lithography mold is pretty equivalent to soft lithography stamp because if you are uh, performing uh, 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 soft lithography in the molding mode because you might remember that we 
had talked about uh, two different modes. Uh, one is the molding mode, one is the uh, printing mode and molding mode is essentially what we are so far limiting our discussion. Of course, in subsequent classes, we will be talking about the printing mode. So, molding mode is something what you use for creating topographically patterned features and surfaces. In contrast, in printing mode, you will be using uh, for making chemically patterned surfaces. Nano imprint lithography also you make uh, use for making topographically patterned surfaces. So, that way uh, we would like to we sort of drew similarities between uh, molding mode, uh, molding mode soft lithography techniques. We have not yet discussed the techniques, we will shortly do so and the nano imprint lithography group of techniques and we realize that the purpose of the mold here is exact equivalent to the stamp, what a stamp does in soft lithography, but we also contrasted uh, from the practical setting as to what can be the advantages of using a flexible stamp as compared to a rigid stamp. And we found that there are phenomenal advantages. Number one is that uh, the use of a flexible stamp can sort of handle defects uh, present within the, uh, on, a, on the film. So, even if your film uh, which you want to pattern or the zone you want to pattern is not completely defect free, uh, then again uh, you can uh, sort of, uh, you can still work with uh, soft lithography, a flexible stamp. And the second thing is uh, you have a huge advantage when it comes to the question of uh, stamp release or mold uh, uh, release in case of nano imprint lithography as compared to uh, stamp release in soft lithography where you can simply do a peeling to achieve that. Having said that, we must also acknowledge that there are some limitations of using a flexible uh, crosslink PDMS uh, as a stamp uh, due to its uh, softness, uh, softness primarily and the mechanical flexibility. Uh, often it becomes difficult to replicate uh, structures with high aspect ratio. So, if you want to have structures with high aspect ratio, that is if you want to create tall structures like this and if the sort of pattern density is uh, very, very high. So, you have low periodicity, but very high aspect ratio structures like this uh, on a uh, soft flexible stamp, this can be a major issue. On a rigid NIL mold, the fabrication can be costly. The fabrication can be costly, but there is no associated problem. What is the problem here? There might be a possibility that these two uh, structures, adjacent structures sort of get attached to each other uh, like this. So, you would not be getting the desired replica and this uh, phenomenon or this particular occurrence is known as what is known as the pairing defect. You can also, there can also be additional problems if you, if you sort of uh, go for a, try to make a very low duty ratio stru uh, uh, structure. So, your final structure will look something like this. This is the duty ratio is very, very low. So, in order to achieve a low duty ratio structure, you would like to use a very high duty ratio stamp. So, you have uh, a large gap between two adjacent protrusions, let us say. And when you try to sort of uh, imprint such a stamp, imprint with such a stamp, because of the mechanical flexibility, this particular portion might sag, might sag and can actually come in contact with the film you are trying to pattern. So, this is what is known as the sagging defect. And also, there can be some sort of lateral shrinkage uh, in the pattern replication during the pattern replication procedure. So, this might eventually result in sort of uh, some sort of a different and uh, uh, in obtaining some structures which uh, have some specific lambda, everything might uh, look to be perfect. So, this is we say that the lambda actual, but uh, you might have 
design that you would create structure at a periodicity of lambda d, which is let us say the lambda desired or the lambda design, but there can be sort of a sort of a lateral shrinkage, which is not very, very high, uh, I must say. But since this is also a flexible polymer, so sometimes in presence of solvent and things like that, we will talk about it in somewhat detail, there might be a uh, sort of a shrinkage in the lateral dimension. So, in that case though you want uh, let us say a periodicity of lambda d, you might actually get a uh, periodicity of lambda a, everything else looks pretty much the same. So, there is a mismatch uh, between lambda a and lambda d or uh, in other words typically your lambda replicated should be absolutely equal to the lambda of stamp, so which uh, may not happen because of shrinkage. So, uh, I would like to conclude this class by saying that uh, though we have in most cases this use of a flexible stamp in, in, the, in the context of soft lithography is extremely advantageous and we have talked in details about some of the advantages, but still you have a few limitations in, in, in case in using a flexible stamp and uh, which are typically taken care of so that they do not cause one of the very severe problems. But yeah, I, I would say pairing remains a serious issue and therefore, uh, with uh, most soft lithography techniques use a flexible stamp, it becomes difficult to create very high aspect ratio structure. But having said that, you must realize that the use of a flexible stamp in the form of a cross-linked elastomer is really uh, where most of the recent activities in soft lithography is taking place and that really makes the technique sort of gives the technique a flavor that you can implement it at your will even if you are a non-expert in this field. In the subsequent class, we will take up different techniques or the in detail about soft lithography.